Let's focus on PVR Inox. Now, uh, PVR Inox has unveiled its uh, first super premium director's cut cinema. Uh, I mean, it's a seven screen multiplex. The shot, the visuals are on your screen in Kopa Mall in Koregaon Park in Pune. Uh, it's upscale locality in Pune and uh, PVR Inox is now a sort of, uh, I think uh, th this, this complex now ac accommodates 751 guests according to the press release that I have from uh, 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 PVR Inox. And, uh, you know, it basically takes their footprint, PVR Inox's footprint in the western part of the country to 367 screens in about 79 cinemas. Mr. Ajay Bijli is joining us now, Managing Director at PVR Inox. Mr. Bijli, uh, good afternoon. Great to have you with us here. Thanks very much. Uh, Prashant this side. Hi. Congratulations Hi, first up. How on, are you? Uh, I'm Thank well, you. sir. Thank you very much. And I can, I can see that I think you are in one of those uh, cinema halls. I'm not sure if it's a director's cut. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it looks plush. So congratulations to you, your team, as you sort of, uh, you know, open these new screens there. Uh, but just sort of put this into context for us. Thank you. Uh, because, you know, it's an old conversation we've had, which is that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a sector, it's an industry, which is actually going through a fair bit of uh, upheaval, change, transition, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you are sort of aggressively increasing your footprint across the country with these premium launches. Uh, so just sort of, let's start there, Mr. Bijri. Go on. Well, uh, well, uh, you know, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, I'd just say that I'm not aggressively uh, sort of opening these properties. I'm just uh, being very careful which catchments uh, still have an untapped potential for a, for a product. And not everywhere uh, it's premium uh, screens. Only 14% of our portfolio is premium screens, and this is one of them. Um, it's just you have to study the market, see the demographic, and then, uh, you know, like Koregaon Park, uh, the whole mall, the positioning is very affluent, and which is the reason why uh, we're opening these what we call premium uh, large format or luxury format cinemas, because India is a disparate market, and uh, if people want to come out of their homes and watch a movie on the big screen, it needs to be substantially different from watching it at home. So I think uh, uh, we are just trying to make the cinemas as experiential as possible by either having cinemas like this, which are uh, all recliner based, or having formats like IMAX, ICE, we have an ICE here as well, which is an immersive cinema experience, or 4DX or PXL, uh, to, to create that massive difference between going out uh, into the malls and seeing on the big screen and watching it at home. So I think that's the, uh, that's the rationale behind uh, you know, opening these. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I, I would say post-COVID, in fact, Indian uh, industry is the only industry which has done better than any other market in the world. And uh, our total box office has gone to 12,000 crores last year. Uh, so I think I remain bullish. Of course, it's taking a little longer than expected. The number of people who are going to the cinemas, not PVR Inox, uh, throughout the country have uh, become lesser than what they were pre-COVID. But the number is only increasing year by year. So, so we are in this for the long run, not just looking at one or two years uh, of uh, you know, uh, business, but uh, a much longer period. Out of home entertainment is here to stay. Oh, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, we couldn't agree more, Ajay. We love to go to the theatres ourselves. It's just such a relief after COVID, right? But, you know, just to talk about these premium formats that, uh, okay. that I think you started launching uh, from Delhi and now, now you're in Pune. Uh, what's the pickup like? And from a business potential perspective, let's say out of your total revenue pie, uh, do you see them contributing, you know, 5%, 10%? And by when? The reason I ask is that this, this should have a direct uh, positive impact on the margin as well, right? So just talk us through the, uh, the business and financial dynamics, the, the expectations that you're working with now. Actually, to be honest, uh, that's a good question. We are uh, finding that our, uh, you know, our uh, EBITDA margins and our returns are better on these formats. But as I said, you have to be very careful because India is such a price sensitive and disparate market. I just can't cope, uh, open them anywhere. Uh, we really have to figure, uh, see the uh, demographics where we open it. And as I said earlier, there are only 14% of our portfolio so far. 86% of our portfolio still is at about 200 rupees ticket price. It's a very small uh, part of our portfolio. Uh, out of 1,744 screens, 14% is at, I don't know what, maybe 200 odd. Uh, screens are this, but slowly we're inching more towards uh, finding those catchments, whether it's Delhi, Bangalore, Pune, even Chandigarh, various other cities where people want no compromise on their experience once they go out. At the same time, I need to have affordable aspirational offerings as well, because only then we'll get the numbers. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, there are lots of cities. We are in about 120 cities now where the ticket price cannot go beyond uh, maybe 200 to 20. Uh, you know, uh, flexi pricing I'm talking about morning, evening, uh, weekend, weekday. So we have to be careful how to approach uh, this heterogeneous market uh, of, uh, you know, movie consumption in India. Mm. But you're, you're at 14% right now. I mean, do you have a target in mind that you'd like to maybe go up to 18 or maybe, you know, 20 over the next two, three years? Is, is there such a roadmap yeah, in place? Ab absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be a num number could be like that. And it's not just creating new cinemas, it's also adding recliners. In a lot of smaller cities, medium cities, we are finding that people are wanting to repurpose our cinemas from normal, you know, normal legroom of, uh, I won't get into technicals, like 1100 millimeter to 570 millimeters to straight away to recliners, which is like, uh, you know, two meters uh, legroom. Uh, so that's also becomes, that also becomes part of our uh, premiumization uh, strategy. It's not just building all screens uh, luxury, but within a six screen complex or a seven screen complex or within one auditorium, adding two, three, four rows of uh, recliners. So that's something else that we're doing. Because pe as I said, there's an aspirational consumer in every city, every town, and he doesn't want to uh, compromise his going out. Once he's made the effort and decided I want to see a movie on the big screen, he's saying uh, it, it, it better be different from watching it at home. Mm. Uh, Asha, is it possible to give us an indication of the occupancy of what is classified as the premium screens versus the sub 200 rupee category screens? What's the difference? You know, I, uh, you know, my results are getting declared on the 14th, and I, there's a huge embargo on me to say anything about numbers. <laughs> but so I'm very careful about what to say because 14th, you'll get to know everything, and there's an interview lined up with you as well. But is uh, the occupancy but, I mean, higher I, on the so-called premium I, I, screens? It's, it's, it's higher. It's higher. Okay. Okay. Uh, and how long does it take, considering yeah. the cost involved in setting up a premium screen, whether it's, you know, the any sort of an experiential screen, uh, how long does it take for you to break even uh, at the current occupancy levels? Well, I, I, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a, you know, a screen where the ticket price is 150 rupees in let's say Ujjain or Indore or, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Nanded or uh, Aurangabad or Latur, uh, or, you know, which has been capitalized at, say, two crores or two and a half crores a screen, or it's this luxury screen which is capitalized at, say, four and a half to five crores a screen, we still look at a payback of about, uh, EBITDA payback of about four years. Because the mm. cost structures, the revenue structures, the capex, everything. So my cr return criteria, investment criteria doesn't change. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Ajay. Congratulations uh, on this new format, and I've uh, been lucky Thank to visit you. one of those, uh, you know, uh, one of those venues, the Latour PVR. Uh, a few years ago, I'd gone and seen a movie out there. So happy to see it out there. Uh, <laughs> you know, this you have adopted uh, these ad-free movies okay. in the premium formats, right? Uh, you know, will the ticket prices, food and beverage, be able to compensate for this ad loss that you'll see? You know, uh, we are uh, experimenting uh, with a lot of things, as you know, 349 passport is there, 99 rupees unlimited offer is there. And we're just trying to listen to the consumer as much as we can. In about 10 properties only, we have tried this experiment and we'll see how it goes. Uh, so far, the results are very positive uh, because, uh, you know, ads were about 17, 18 minutes. Now they're getting compensated by one extra show. And uh, like, you know, on streaming services, you have a freemium and premium services where ads are there or not there. I said, why don't we experiment with 10 uh, properties and see how it goes. Uh, so far, the consumer experience has been very positive, but we'll see how it plays out. I mean, we are still showing um, uh, trailers uh, and, and some you know, mandatory and statutory slides that we have to show. But other than, it's, uh, other than that, it's uh, ad-free. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out because ad revenue is a very important component of our overall revenue mix, uh, and we don't want to hit it. Um, but but let's see how it goes. In few properties, very very premium. Uh, maybe maybe we'll carry on with it. And there the results are good, very good. Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, Ajay, just one last point. I mean, I know you can't talk about uh, numbers etc. because uh, earnings are around the corner. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it, we get the movies and yeah, how this, they've done. I'm, right? I'm I'm like really nervous with this interview. By the way, I, no, 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 I mean, <laughs> we won't put you in a spot yeah. at all or ask you uh, to talk about something which you can't, obviously. Uh, but is the pipeline looking uh, in in the fourth quarter, which we will report numbers? It's been a little because we get which movies have collected how much. So there are 
there are no really large blockbusters in that sense. So, you know, the street kind of anchors them, uh, itself to that uh, when, when they look at what to expect and analysts put out previews, etc. But is the pipeline for Q1 uh, with the quarter we're in and beyond looking a little more firmer? Uh, looks a little more, look, looks more promising? You see, I've, I've been in this business 34 years now and, you know, since time immemorial, it's very difficult to predict by just looking at the, uh, what is the pipeline. You know, when I was looking at um, March, I saw crew. It did not look promising and it's done incredible numbers. I saw Lapata ladies, it's done incredible numbers. Then Shaitan came, it did incredible numbers. So you never really know what movie is going to click because we, we haven't seen the film, we've only seen the trailers. We go by the pa past reputation of the actors and the directors. Uh, so pipeline is what it is. Of course, due, due to elections, uh, not much is coming till the end of May. And, uh, and then suddenly after the results, there's a huge uh, flow of films. 1,700 films got released last year. This year, 1,500 films are getting released. So it's difficult to predict what's going to do well or not. But I continue to remain optimistic that there's going to be a lot of sleeper hits out there because a lot of focus is being put to scripts now. And, yeah. uh, and people are, uh, you know, I just saw the trailer of Shrikant, which is releasing on, uh, on uh, Friday. Um, and it's looking very promising. Uh, so, uh, as I said, pipeline is what it is. Uh, mm. But you never know what gems and what big hits will come out. Yeah. Um, and my definition of a blockbuster is uh, not the production cost, or the star but, cast, it's what yeah. uh, the consumer, the verdict that the consumer gives, and then, um, you know, the revenues that they generate. So I'm Absolutely. still very optimistic about the pipeline that I see. Absolutely. Uh, well put. Uh, Ajay, we'll, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much uh, for your time, and congratulations once again to you, t uh, to you and your team uh, on that new launch. And speak to you soon again. Thank as you. As you release the numbers for the quarter and the year as well. Uh, we'll talk then. Well, Hero Motocop